and friends and neighbors and all you folks ain't got nothing better to do than watch this channel. It's your friendly neighborhood old soldier coming at you from a cool, crisp morning down here in Robinson County, North Carolina, where the weather is supposed to warm up throughout the remainder of the week and get back up into the 80s until next week. And next week, looking at the forecast, it's taking a heck of a dip. So we're going to go, I think it's Monday, high of 80 to high of 56 on Tuesday next week. Yeah. Quite the uh, differential and change there. But anyway, everybody's been having a good week so far. We, we transition into the halfway point today. It being a whole day, as they say. If you remember that stupid commercial. Um, you know, we want the camel running through the office hollering, Hump day, can you guess what day it is? You know, all that stupid stuff. You know, I never really cared for commercials like that. Like bugs, lions, or, you know, three frogs. No stupid commercials. But if Budweiser stuck in three frogs, instead of going with that uh, Fruit Loop Mulvaney, might not be on the verge of going bankrupt. But hey, you know, sad as you go woke, go broke. I ain't got no remorse for Budweiser. I'm never a Budweiser fan anyway. Budweiser always gave me a headache when I drank it. Well, I either prefer the PBR. And yes, I'll admit it, I like Michelob. Michelob was my go-to when I was in Germany. But uh, Coors, that was my other favorite, Coors. Coors and Coors Banquet. Back when I used to partake thereof. Anywho, anyhow, anyway, this is for you, Brother Kyle. Everybody's doing well. Uh, let's talk about a few things, folks. Things you need to be uh, focusing on. You need to get a paper map of your area. Yep. Why? Well, there are certain places you can remember to get to off the top of your head. There's some places you don't. And if something goes down, like I'm thinking it's gonna happen, satellites in the sky are gonna go poof. And when they do, your GIPS, your GIPS, your GLIPS, your GBDS, all them other acronyms meaning the satellite in the sky that tells you where you're at, ain't gonna work no more. At least the ones we use. So you need to invest in some maps of your area. If anything, go buy your road atlas. Where can I get that old soldier? You can still find those at truck stops. Truck stops and the big chain bookstores. Worst case scenario, go on to Rand McNally's website and order one and have it shipped. You can also get it from Amazon. Oh, old soldier, I don't want to shop at Amazon. I get it, folks. What's the lesser two evil? Walmart or Amazon? I don't know. Out of principle, I don't go to Walmart anymore, but I do shop off of Amazon. So sue me. Um, U.S. Geologic Survey and Topographical Service, you can go on and find and order maps of your area. When I say your area, I'm talking about something within a 50 mile radius from where you live. Next thing, invest in a good lensetic compass. Okay? Good lensetic compass. You need to also get some materials on how to use that compass, i.e., some basic literature on land navigation. Because there's things with a map, and you'll need to get a map 
protractor and the scale of that map protractor needs to match the scale of the maps that you've ordered. And most of your topographic maps from the U.S. Geological Survey are going to be 1 over 24,000. So for all you GIs out there, it's hard to find a, a 1 over 50,000 map of your area. I've tried. Um, it's not impossible, but it's easier to get the ones from the Geologic Survey and they're 1 over 24,000. And you can get a multi-scaled protractor, which I've got a couple of, and one of them has the 1 over 24,000 scale. Well, why is that important, old soldier? Well, for those that know what a map protractor is and what it's used for, so you can convert, or so you can shoot a grid azimuth on a map, but also know the legend at the bottom so you know your grid to magnetic conversion, magnetic to grid conversion. What's that mean? So when you shoot an azimuth with your compass, or as they say in, in uh, Great Britain, your bearing, get that bearing, um, with a prismatic compass, as they call it over there, uh, you have to know that there's a variation from grid, how it's drawn on a map, to the magnetic variance of the magnetic pole to north. Okay? In some maps, you'll subtract to convert and you'll add to convert and vice versa to go from magnetic to grid and it will tell you down in the map legend okay. these are things you need to be aware of these things you need to start training on All right. part of it too is find you a state park national park get a map of it get your compass get your tractor and do some basic land navigation. And one of the things you can do is first go to a local high school football field. Of course, not when the kids are playing and not when the coach is out there cutting grass or painting lines. Cause when I was in high school, we had a coach that threw a fit if he caught you out there on the field. Um, I forget, ran us off. My dad went down there and chewed him out. Said, it's not a season coach. I pay my taxes like everybody else. And, you, know, you let your players come out here and play all the time after the season. But because my kids don't play on your team, you know, mm -hmm. dad set them up one time. I never had no problem again. All right, off that tangent, back on the point I'm getting at. 100 yards is roughly equivalent to 100 meters, give or take. And what's the difference? A yard is 36 inches, whereas a meter is roughly 39 inches. Most of your maps are going to have things in either yards, standard miles, or meters. You need to learn your pace count. Why is that important? So when you're walking on that azimuth to your point, you can count your steps and know how far you have gone. And then you make a pace counter. Well, how do I do that? Well, how do I make a pace counter, old soldier? Well, string. So for every uh, 100 meters you walk, 100 yards you walk, you can tie a knot. Now, I, I use meters because in the military we use meters and kilometers. It's, it's a simple, simple thing. So for uh, every 100 meters, or yeah. For every thousand meters you walk, you've walked one kilometer. So we'd have, it looks like sliding beads. You had four on top and you had nine on the bottom. So, so every time you walked 100 meters, you slide one down. When you get to that ninth one, you knew the next one was going to be a top one. That was one kilometer. So you knew that's how far you have walked. It's a way of measuring distance. When you walk those four kilometers, you reset everything. And you just had to make a mental note, I've already gone four kilometers. Right. Learn how to terrain associate. Oh, Golden, what does terrain associate? It's knowing prominent features on a map and knowing how to find them by looking at the terrain that surrounds you. In an urban environment, big buildings, structures, man-made structures that stand out such as a dam, skyscraper, a quarry, um, 
out in the environment, a prominent mountaintop, uh, a river, a prominent lake, ridge line, things of that nature. Uh, a road intersection, a major road intersection can be a prominent feature. Knowing where these are at can help you terrain associate. And why is terrain association important? Because when you come up on it and you're looking at the map and you see it, okay, I, I know I'm right here. And I can correct if I've gotten off course, okay, wait a minute, I'm here, oh, wait a minute, I drifted. That's the other reason you get out and practice this too, is so that when you're walking on your asthma, you learn to compensate for drift. Oh, soldier, what's that? People have a tendency to pull one way or the other when they're walking on an asthma. And what it is, you get these guys that will shoot an asthma 200 yards out and, and, and try to stay on point 200 yards out and they start drifting. I used to teach my soldiers shoot for something that's about 10 or 20 yards out, walk to that point. When you got to that point, like a tree, a post, whatever, then you step to the right, shoot that azimuth again to the next, while staying on the same azimuth, but you shoot it to another point 20, 30 meters ahead. When you got hit, you'd step to the left. That way it would compensate for lateral drift. Because if you just kept going, you said the human body has a tendency to drift, a lot of times based on your dominant uh, arm whether your dominant arm be your right or your left. So those things to keep in mind. Um, and there's several companies out there that make good ones that it compasses. Silva's one company. Um, you can go to a surplus store and get a good military lensetic compass. With those, you know, you, you see the ones that has the little radioactive symbol. I mean that they're they have tritium in them, which is the nuclear material they actually put in military grade compasses, so they glow in the dark at night. And, you know, military we, we don't stop doing anything just because night falls, so you have to be able to navigate at night as well. So therefore, the tritium glows in the dark, but you can see your compass at night. Do what you have to do there. But get out and do these things. And like I said, just a road atlas alone. Because if they knock these satellites out of the sky or they jam the city, whatever the case may be, and you've got to get somewhere to check on somebody, and you're used to using that GPS, it may not be available, folks. I'm not trying to scare nobody. Folks, crap's about to hit the fan in some shape, form, or fashion. And what that's going to be, I, I'm clueless right now. I'm clueless. But at the rate we are going as a nation, the way things are going, something's about to give. Something's about to happen. We're being set up for something. Tell you is get as prepared as you possibly can. So that covers land navigation. Or well, if I'm going somewhere where I don't have a map, well, at a minimum, get a map of the nation. Again, your road atlas will have that in there. Know where you're at. I live in North Carolina, so I know if I go to Virginia, I got to go north. If I got to go to Tennessee, I've got to go west. If I want to go to the Atlantic Ocean, I've got to go east. If I want to go into parts of Georgia, South Carolina, or Florida, I got to go south. Other parts of Georgia or Alabama, I've got to go southwest. Other parts of Virginia, West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and you know them weird northern states, I've got to go northwest. And then if I really want to go where it's dangerous, i got to go due north and go through the, that crazy place called Washington, D.C. I 
get on my wife all the time about we have friends that live in Chattanooga that want to come visit us. She says, well, so-and-so may be coming down. No, they're not coming down. Yes, they are. No, they're not. They may be coming over. They're not coming down. They don't live up from us. She gets mad when I do it.